The CBC's Connie Walker begins our extensive coverage tonight. Peter, Connie. before the report was released, the audience was reminded what it was all about. I am here to verify we were treated like a herd of animals. Video testimony of some of the thousands of residential school survivors set the tone for this historic day. Taken into a back room, stripped and repeatedly raped throughout the night and sodomized. And the whole time I'm told I'm not right, that I'm an animal. <laughs> I really, really was alone, lonely, scared. Justice Murray Sinclair has listened to these stories for six years. Today was his chance to be heard. The residential school experience is clearly one of the darkest, most troubling chapters in our collective history. But he also struck a hopeful note. But as the survivors have shown us, they have survived. The recognition of resilience sparked a sense of celebration in the room. Cheers erupted as Sinclair read some of the 94 recommendations. A new royal proclamation of reconciliation, renewal of nation-to-nation -nation and treaty relationships, full implementation of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which affirms the right to the lands and resources which they have traditionally owned or occupied. And in the audience, people who could help make it happen. But Aboriginal Affairs Minister Val Coeur was one of the few who didn't rise when Sinclair called for a national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women. In a speech later, he committed to only one recommendation. Our government will be providing support towards the important work of the National Centre. The Prime Minister pointed to the recent budget as proof of his government's commitment to improving the lives of Aboriginal people. Vast amounts of money that are being made available for uh, further progress and reform on First Nations education, including more post-secondary scholarships and opportunities, also some health investments, particularly in mental health, on reserves. These are concrete things. But there was also a direct plea to the Canadian public. Make the space and make room in your hearts and your minds and your spirit. And what I mean by that is to rid yourselves of those racist attitudes. His hope? That the recent swell of Canadian support for Aboriginal people becomes a tidal wave. Those images of Indigenous peoples as being substandard and pagan and savage. Rid yourself of those racial stereotypes of Indians and Indigenous peoples being dumb and lazy and drunk on welfare. Rid yourself of those things so new things can come in. And the new things to come in are the respect for our languages, our customs and our traditions, that we are equally as important as human beings. But with all eyes on the future, it's clear there is no immediate relief for the survivors and their families. But I don't want to be my story like to be treated uh, as a souvenir, like where you spend time. When you get a souvenir, you spend a lot of time looking for it, and once you get it, you spend a lot of money and then you show it off to a lot of friends, like what we're doing here, like, and then after a while it's gonna gather dust and then be put away and forgotten. I don't want that to happen. Justice Sinclair met today with Prime Minister Harper. In a statement, he said he remains concerned about the government's resistance to adopt the UN Declaration. Peter? All right, Connie, thanks.